President Obama's Christianity, the National Prayer Breakfast, Part 4. The President went on to state in his speech at the prayer breakfast, quote, the majority of great reformers in American history did their work not just because it was sound policy, or they had done good analysis, or understood how to exercise good politics, but because their faith and their values dictated it and called for bold action, sometimes in the face of indifference, sometimes in the face of resistance. What I want to particularly draw your attention to about this statement is the President's last two clauses. Because he is speaking about great reformers, that is, those who have shifted our country away from historic constitutionalism and the free market economy more towards a socialistic political philosophy. Note carefully, he states, that their faith and values, and that's the key word, dictated those so-called reforms. This is very important. All values are derived from faith. The question is, what faith are we talking about? And once that is determined, then we can understand the very nature of the values that he is speaking of. The values that are being called for in the context of this speech, which he refers to in the context of Christianity. Another thing to note is that the president is not speaking about the founders of our countries, their faith and value, but those reformers who redirect our nation away from pre-14th Amendment constitutionalism, of which the 14th Amendment has been the greatest destructive amendment to our Constitution, which has inverted the power away from our states and states' rights to the all-encompassing power of a federal government, to a national collectivism, or what a true conservative would call socialism. The president also identifies with these reformers because they had to take bold actions. By this, he is seeking to justify his bold changes to a modern socialism, which if not stopped in this election, will lead our nation from the mobocracy of this democracy that has been created already to an elitist socialism as we find it today in Europe and eventually to communistic policies of the past. This socialism always attacks the right of the free exercise of a religion. This is important to understand. It does not attack the right to think about religion in any form. What it seeks to do is to restrict the free exercise of religion in America. Why do you think this administration has indirectly declared war on the church, that is, on the free exercise of the church's religion. You will never hear such socialistic enterprise speak about wanting to take away your right to worship God as you conceive Him. They just want to control the free exercise of how you live out your faith in your daily life and in the life of the church as long as it does not interfere with our national socio-political development. Do you understand the difference between the right to believe versus the free right to exercise your religion? The president then goes on to point out that such bold reforms are, quote, sometimes in the face of indifference, sometimes in the face of resistance. This is a warning that should be taken seriously. While there is always indifference, that is, those who are apathetic, but such bold reforms always have resistance. The president has identified himself as one who always wants to be a great American reformer with bold ideas. He called them changes. That even in the face of apathy or resistance, such changes must come. They will come from the president's faith and values because his faith and values dictate that he 
bring those changes to pass. These values from his faith he calls Christianity. But is it really historic Orthodox Christianity? Or is it a synthesis of Christianity with Marxist philosophy that is known as liberation theology?